coming up on the sports desk. The Saxons Friday Night Lights, oh, how bright it was. The Torrent Showdown between the Tartars and Spartans showed off some mad skills and a mad score. And Bishop Montgomery gets its first dub on the gridiron. We will take you there. We'll also take you to the Shoot 360 basketball court with the kids. Crashing a practice with the West High Track and Field Squad. To volleyball, we go with South, West, and Torrance High. And you know it, ECC, they just keep winning. Pioneer League matchups in boys water polo, we've got them. The Lady Tartars and Knights tee off. Plus, those Knights have claimed two Delray League titles already. We'll tell you in which sports. We've got the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Let's get things started right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Sports Desk, your one source for all things tour and sports. I am your host, Leslie Robbins, bringing you a gateway to the brightest sports stars and hottest sports spots in Torrance. Before we get to the good stuff, we want to hear from you. Here are the social media stats. I'm at Leslie Mia. The show is at the Sports Desk TV. We've got email, Facebook. Tell us what's going on and what we need to know, because when it comes down to it, this show is all about you. Now let's get you in the know with some numbers. Week 7 in football brought the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Let's just say for some teams, offense was on fire, while for others, defense seemingly couldn't find their groove. Let's start with North at their homecoming game. It's a team that didn't even let Morningside score. How does 55 to nothing sound? Sounds good to us. That game put them at 6-1 and one overall and 2-0 and oh in league. Melanie Chacon was there. Friday Night Lights brought North yet another W. With a 55-0 win over Morningside, the Saxons extend their winning streak to six. They are now 6-1 and one on the season. Here are some highlights for you guys from tonight. On North's first possession, it's Stephen Bradford Jr. who takes it in for the early 7-0 lead. Late in the first, a pick six by Lucas Luza and the Saxons go up 21-0 after one. Minutes later, another pick six, this time by North's Stephen Bradford Jr. and he is gone. An 89-yard return, 28-0 North. Later, Lagardi to Bradford Jr. make that three for the senior running back, and the Saxons win it a whopping 55-0 victory over Morningside. Here's what Coach Croce had to say about bringing in his second unit at the half. We just rested them, put in all second kids, and, and gave them a chance to play. They all work hard. You know, the scout teams bust their butts all season long, and they don't get uh, the chance to play so much. So this was nice to see them get in there for a full half and, and give it the go. After dropping the first game to San Pedro, North has turned its season around, going 6-0 since. Here's Croce again. It's good to get that wake-up call early on, and, and we played a good football team, and they were definitely more prepared than us. And then our kids have been consistently improving. And that's, that's, our, that's our goal each week, just get ourselves better, no matter who we're playing. It's the homecoming game and another whiteout game here at North High. So this is our, our uh, tailgate party that we're having here. Uh, it's part of the homecoming festivals that we have going on. And here, what we're doing this year is we're doing something called the Rise of the Saxon Nation. And what that is, it's our our little way of booster club to be able to bring the community together. And we're going to continue to do this, and I'm looking forward to the next one we're doing, um, and especially as we go on through playoffs. And I really you know, anticipate that, that this whole parking lot is going to be full. You know, that's one good thing about the, how we have is how the setup is. The location that we have, we have an entire parking lot dedicated for this tailgate, and we have the community that supports it that, that's going to want to be, be part of it. A few miles across town, we witnessed a Torrance area showdown between the Tartars and the Spartans where South completely demolished Torrance. Like the Spartans' defense didn't even let Torrance score at all, as in 64 to nothing, which puts them at 4-3 and three overall, 1-1 one and one in league. Justin Thompson has the highlights. Thanks, Leslie. Lots of smiling Spartans here tonight at South High School for their homecoming game against Torrance High. And wow, was South fired up from the fans to the players. They really wanted this one, and the team delivered. We'll get to the highlights right now. Torrance got the ball first to start the game, and the Tartars were driving down the field until this fumble gave the ball 
and some early momentum to the Spartans. And South took advantage a few plays later on this pass from Drew Nash to Bryce Caulfield. Bryce takes it all the way to the house and gives South an early 7-0 lead. High snap, but another easy touchdown for the Spartans, this time senior Cade Barger showing off his speed, racing to the end zone and putting the Spartans up 14-0. On to the second quarter where it was Bryce Caulfield again, this time a 95-yard touchdown, catch and run, unbelievable. And just like that, it was a 21-0 game. Drew Nash with his fourth passing touchdown of the half on this perfectly placed ball to Cade Jones. Here's Drew talking about his last homecoming game where he threw six touchdown passes. Uh, it means a lot. Just doing, I just do everything for my team. I don't do anything for myself. This is all for my team. You know, Our goal this year is get to playoffs, make a deep run, and I believe we can do it. Well, they certainly can if they keep firing like this. The defense came up with two pick sixes to end the first half. After the game, DJ Palma, the leader of the defense and the homecoming king, shared his thoughts on what makes this Spartans defense so special. It's just the, the mindset of not letting anyone pass you. It's just um, a lot of hard work, determination during the week. Uh, we put it all in the field during practice so we know exactly what to do uh, on game day. Another beautiful touchdown pass from Drew Nash in the second half would extend the lead to 57. And Jackson Fish would put the finishing touches on this one with a nice 10-yard touchdown run to make it a final score of 64-0. to zero. Here's what South had to say about their best win of the season. We played hard, we played fast, we played physical, and it was just a great game for us tonight. I saw my entire team working as hard as they could, and uh, we took this loss last year. We took it pretty hard. Um, we saw this game on our schedule at the beginning of the season, and I knew we wanted this win, and we got it, got it tonight. We're really proud of the kids. Uh, they played hard. Um, they got us last year, and we kind of regret some of the things we did out there in the last one. So we thought about it. Well, I'm not going to lie and say we didn't think about that one in the offseason. So we, were, we had some extra motivation because of last year, yeah. Defense is my thing, so obviously when you, you know, pitch the shutouts, they're great. And, and as I said, that the one thing i got to give these guys credit for is we bend and, and a lot, and, but a lot of times we don't break, and um, our, our back secondary guys are awesome. Uh, and then uh, we just have a knack for forcing turnovers through all three levels of our defense, and that's why I told them at halftime. I said, for whatever reason, like it's proven now after seven weeks that these guys know how to turn the ball over. So it's, it's, it's pretty exciting to be a part of. And the Friday night lights were shining super bright over at Bishop Montgomery. Finally, as the Knights got their very first dub of the season, and it was close, 33-28 to against Pioneer, which puts the Knights at 1-6 and six overall. Cameron Stelly has more. It was homecoming night tonight, and you could feel the energy in the air as the Knights went head-to-head -head with the Pioneers, resulting in Bishop Montgomery's first win of the season. Bishop Montgomery looked like a different team in week six, taking control of the game early when quarterback Matthew Cortez finds Britton Hewitt for his first TD of the night. Pioneer isn't able to respond and it's Knights ball again. Later in the second quarter, Hewitt again taking it to the house, bringing the lead 19 to nothing. But Pioneer doesn't stay quiet for long when Andrew Franco breaks free from defenders and gets the Titans on the board. Then a muffed punt from the Knights sets the Titans up for their next touchdown, making it 19 to 14. Both the Knights and the Titans get one more TD before the half. After half, the Knights came out with the same momentum. They held the Pioneers back and stayed in control for the remainder of the game. Senior Brandon Murray added one more for the Knights when he turned on the Jets and returned this for a TD, making it his second of the night. Bishop would allow just one more touchdown for the Titans, making the final 33 to 28 to end their losing streak. Here's what the Knights had to say about getting their first win. Honestly, our old line stepped up today and I was, um, you know, glad for them and that's all we can wish for, you know, good performance by our quarterback too, but that's all we can do. Um, he was just saying treat it like a normal game and just go out there and compete and that's all you can do. We finish and we execute. I'm um, really satisfied with the way we play tonight. You know, we got in our stuff quicker. You know, we got, we got the offense going, got the defense going towards the end there. You know, the offensive line definitely stuck up there at the end. You know, getting the first downs and the defense definitely uh, proved the, that they're contenders this year. Well, you know, all season we've been getting a little bit better. And it all kind of came together tonight. You know, we played physical. Uh, I think we did most of our assignments well. Um, so everything kind of came together. A little luck was on our side tonight. And um, our skill guys had big plays. West was away and no doubt wants to keep their latest score far, far away forever. They lost to Inglewood 77 to nothing, which is a hard fall after beating Morningside 43 to nothing last week.
They are now one and six overall, one and one in league. Okay, coming up on the volleyball courts with Torrance, North, South, and don't you know it, the Lady Warriors at ECC. Track and field time with the West Warriors. An ECC star takes first place. Boys water polo Pioneer League action, basketball, and then some at Shoot 360. Plus, the Lady Tartars and Knights hit the green and tennis courts and get noticed. Stay tuned. These are the moments that bring us to our feet. The anticipation. The 15 seconds of fame. The big catch. But the most important moment happens when we all stand together. Join us as we stand up to show our support for loved ones affected by cancer. Visit standuptocancer.org slash MLB. Stand up with us. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. Leslie Robbins here. ECC Volleyball continues to dominate the community college circuit. Currently 6-0 in conference and 11-4 overall. These Warriors show no signs of slowing down. Here are some gems from when the Warriors won its sixth straight game, staying undefeated in South Coast Conference play with a 3-1 victory over Pasadena. Michaela Clark and Jocelyn LaCroix led the way offensively for Elko as they went for 17 and 12 kills respectively. Clark posted another double-double with 11 digs and Caitlin Donatucci dished out 38 assists in the victory. This team would go on to beat East Los Angeles 3-0 two days later. Crazy good. Girls volleyball is in full swing in our high schools too, of course, and just our luck, we were courtside as the Lady Tartars recently swept Morningside in killer fashion. Justin Thompson has the highlights. The Torrance volleyball team in action looking to defend home court against Morningside, and this one was all Tartars from the get-go. After 17 points of play, Torrance enjoyed an 11-6 lead and never looked back from there, dropping only three more points the rest of the set for a 25-9 victory. More of the same in the second set, with the Tartars dominating the whole way and winning this set 25-8. And finally, Torrance closed it out in the third set with a 25-7 victory, making it a clean sweep for the Tartars over Morningside. After the game, team captain Francesca Aguilar shared her thoughts on the night, shouted out her teammates, and pointed out some areas the team could improve. In the beginning of the season, like we weren't really like communicating with each other, and I feel like we're more like as a team, but we still need to work on things. We were just focusing on like trying to play well and keeping the ball in play. I would say Emma, like her hit, that was like the hardest hit I've ever seen, like hit all season, so I was really proud of her today. I thought Rhea did a good job just passing balls today. She's doing great, yeah. I feel like we need to work on like coming together more and just working together as a team. Earlier in the week, Torrent swept Inglewood as well, 3-0. They are now 9-9 nine and nine overall, 5-3 and three in league. It's volleyball time at West High with two eager and upcoming teams in the Pioneer League facing off. No, they aren't varsity quite yet, but they're well on their way. The Frosh Soft West Warriors taking on the South High Spartans. We pick things up in the second set where after 16 points, both teams were all tied up at eight apiece. A very evenly matched affair that continued for the whole set. But finally, at 18 all, the Spartans started to pull away, winning seven of the next eight points to win the set 25 to 19. So on we go to the decisive final set, where South jumped out to a 10 to 5 lead. West fought hard the whole way, battling back to 13 17, but ultimately fell just short. And the Spartans would pull away to secure the victory with a final score of 25 to 17. South and West varsity teams are both powerhouses in the Pioneer League with South boasting a 17-7 overall record and West standing strong at 13-8 overall so far. South won the varsity matchup as well on this occasion, sweeping West three sets to none. And over at Bishop Montgomery, the Varsity Lady Knights first swept St. Anthony 3-0 and then beat LaSalle 3-1. Those stats and a killer season helped solidify the Lady Knights volleyball team as Del Rey League champion. Congratulations, ladies. And more accolades must go to the Lady Knights tennis team, who also just won the Del Rey League this week. I knew I was watching that team all season for a reason. And one more shout out to the Bishop Montgomery 
golf team. Those ladies are killing it. They just grabbed their first win of the season, beating St. Anthony 265 to 264. And staying on the green, congrats are in order to the Torrance High Golf Team and Coach Carr, of course. Once again, they recently just came in second place at the Ayala Tournament. Kids are winning on the basketball court as they learn all about the sport at Shoot 360. We hit up a class where students were getting the basics down. Basics besides shooting and dribbling. We've got a little group class going on today for movement, stability, and agility. So we're gonna do a lot of stuff for balance, our core a little bit, ankle stability, stability on one leg, jumping off one leg, two foot stuff as well. Cause you know, a lot of basketball, you're jumping off one. So we wanna make sure the kids are strong and ready to go once the season starts. But we're gonna do a little bit of line drills at the beginning, which you jump over the line and try to go as quick as you can to improve your footwork. We're gonna do some ladder drills. We're gonna do a little bit of ball handling on the ladder as well, which is a little different, more basketball specific. We'll probably do some lunges, some balance work, a little bit of core work and call it a day. Today we've got seventh and eighth graders. We try to start at the fundamental level here. So if you're, you know, first time player coming in the door, we're happy to work with you, break things down, explain it from the basics. So you don't really need any prior knowledge base, but it would help. One kid we have in this class specifically, Christian, he was pretty much a brand new player when I came here and you know he's made huge strides in a few months so that's fun to see. We just like worked on our stability on our legs, our movement, our speed. Uh, it really helped us as how we grow as an athlete. It just helped me like improve my stamina and also our speed. You can really like feel like stuff like hurting a lot. I think I pulled my hamstring while doing this though, but yeah. The more difficult part is like the stuff that you don't know. So like the first time doing your between the legs or first time like doing a specific stretch, you seem to like mess up a lot, but once you get like used to like um, doing it, then you'll get more accustomed to how to do it and how to improve on doing that specific thing over and over again. It's just a good way to connect with everyone and also like to help your body grow as well. The movement and stability, agility one is really fun to me because you get to move around. Just You don't just play 1v1s and stuff. You just like move your feet a lot, run, catch and stuff. This practice was really fun when Coach Joey's always here on the court. He always makes it fun. Okay, coming up, water polo, a double header rivalry matches. We are there. It's track and field time at West High, plus an ECC running star takes first place. Stay tuned. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge to treat everyone with respect. Respect and dignity. I will not tolerate discrimination. Or harassment of any kind. I will speak up. I will speak up whenever I know discrimination is happening. And I will stand up. Get up. Rise up. For victims. Take the pledge at risetowin.org. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. Leslie Robbins here. Boys water polo is what's up this season. And now that we've got some league matches on the schedule, I say bring it on. To the Torrance Aquatic Center we go with Melanie Chacon. Thanks, Leslie. We've got a double header here today at the Torrance Aquatic Center between four of the Torrance High Schools. First up is North High taking on Torrance. After that, we'll follow West versus South. The first game started off aggressively between the Tartars and the Saxons with some good shots on goal and nice blocks by both keepers. This shot by Jason Buntgen would give the Tartars an early 1-0 lead. A long pass from Torrance keeper Jet Hayes to Armando Mendoza and the Tartars score again. Back to back, it's Hayes to Mendoza again and the Tartars lead North 4-0 after one. In the second quarter, North's Nathan Lee would put the Saxons on the board and it's 5-1 Torrance at the half. The Saxons would put up a few more points in the third and fourth quarters, but the Tartars dominated the game and ran away with a 15-5 victory over North. Our goalie did a great job as always, Jet Hayes. Um, he's really solid. He has really great passes today. He had some really great passes that actually got to assist into the goals. Um, also Armando Mendoza, he's um, our captain and he had some nice shots. So we're 
nearing the end of our season. We only have um, six games after today. Um, so we have all of our, the rest of our league games, which is South and North, uh, South, North and West. And then we also have one other game against Milken, who we've already played this year. Our performance was mediocre, but this was more about the experience, about having some fun versus North. We know that we should beat them uh, with all due respect. Um, so this game was more about making a statement. And you can tell West this, but at Torrance, Torrance Water Polo, we're not about uh, making statements with periods. We like to end our statements with exclamation points. So that's why uh, I made that shot at the end. I'm over 100 blocks now uh, this far into the season. Um, but that really hasn't been me. It's been more of our team and our defense. Uh, they've been giving me good looks, good opportunities to get saves. And water polo, it's all about your defense and how they make you look. Our first league win is always good because it's a good start to the league, obviously. Uh, we've definitely been putting more work in during practice, so it's showing during the games with the wins. Uh, we're feeling good this season, though. Very good. We've slowly become more like an actual team. We've been getting everyone involved, and I like that because it's a sport of water polo. It's a team game, not a one-player game. And the more we do that, the better we're going to get, so that's what we got to do. To the next game we go. It was a battle between West and South. West taking a 4-1 to one lead by the second quarter, but South fought back and made it 6-5 to five Spartans at the half. A penalty shot for South is blocked by West Keeper and the two teams fight on. For the Warriors, Isaiah Garcia is open and he shoots and he scores. On the other end, South's Yusuf Gobran finds teammate Justin Gamaki and he'll go right over the keeper and the Spartans win 11-9. I think they did amazing. They finally started to play as a team, helped back on defense, and they kind of were lacking in taking shots in the beginning, but they finally started to put them away towards the end, so it was nice to see. We started off our season with a loss against Culver City, I believe, and that was a little bit of a downer, but since then we've been building and improving, and this kind of just is another stepping stone for us moving forward. I feel like we did uh, amazing. Um... We did a lot better than our last games, even though we did win a couple of our last games. Um, we really worked together. Uh, we worked on our drives, our counterattacks, and uh, I'm really proud of our uh, defense. They're a really good team. Uh, they started off really strong, and uh, we weren't expecting that. But then we got, uh, we got used to their momentum, and then uh, we caught up to them, and then uh, we won. I feel like we did pretty good. We played a lot better, like more of a team game than our last games. We improved a lot on defense, did a lot better on offense, um, putting away more shots definitely. I wasn't on the team last year because I'm a freshman, but I know that they lost, so this was a good win to get over them. Gives us a lot of momentum, seeing that they're probably the best team in our league, so after this win, we have a lot of momentum going forward to beat the other teams. Staying outdoors, the track and field team at West has been making all sorts of headlines. Take a look at this. All right, number four in Division Two in the state, West Torrance. This group just attended the Clovis Invitational, one of the biggest meets in the state, where they ran the 12th fastest time out of 247 varsity teams. Incredible considering they were running with all the top teams in California. And a few days later, we paid a visit to West to check out what a practice entails. Cameron Stelly has the story. West High Boys Cross Country is off to the races this season and things are looking pretty good. This year's team is the best the school has had, so good that they have guys breaking school records. Junior Josh Murray, the guy responsible for breaking these records, is seeing his hard work paying off. I feel like breaking the school record is definitely a big milestone in my life. Um, I never thought I'd break it as a junior. Just to do that, it feels amazing. Obviously, I feel like there's definitely probably been faster guys at West, but I was lucky to get in a fast race. Josh Murray is one hell of a runner. He, uh, he's a junior, been putting in a lot of work, been running a little bit extra, and it really paid off. He ran 1432 at Woodbridge, which is the fastest time we've had here. Uh, whether or not that's, that's the real school record, we don't really know, but it's the fastest anyone's run. Murray believes preparation at practice has been the key to success this season. We'll have easy days and then workouts, so usually easy days are like eight to nine miles and recovery days too. And then workouts, we have like anything from like four mile tempos to um, 800 meter repeats or something like that. And then we'll have cool downs, which are like vary from depending on the workout. Our workout coming up is going to be five by five minutes, which means that each kid's going to run five minutes 
at a really, really good pace, take a three minute break and do it again for five times. And we're actually gonna do this on our, on our home course to get ready for next Wednesday, which is our, first, or is our second league meet. Last time Torrance High got the best of us. And so we're gonna practice here and get ready for them. Murray knows the stakes are high to finish strong this season, but head coach Jason Druten is confident with the talent that his team has going into state competition. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of pressure on us because technically we're the best team that West High has ever had, so we're definitely trying to do really good at state and hopefully make NXN after. Um, I feel like there's a lot of pressure there, and um, yeah, we just got to kind of bring our A game. Uh, I think we just need to improve on just finishing races. We've got out pretty good. We run okay in the middle. We've had a little struggle in, towards the back end. So maybe consistency in the race and just like uh, just consistency overall at practice and getting to bed on time. And get this, Coach Druden just told me that Josh Murray, the record breaker, just committed to UCLA for next year. He will be running for the Bruins. And more speedy congratulations are in order to ECC track and field star Matt Aruda, who won the 42nd annual Manhattan Beach 10K with a time of 32.05. That's what I call a hometown hero. And that is going to do it for this week's show. We will see you back here next week. In the meantime, here are the social media stats. I'm at Leslie Mia. The show is at the Sports Desk TV. We've got email, Facebook. Be sure to keep in touch and take us behind your scenes. For everyone here at the Sports Desk, I'm Leslie Robbins. Thanks for watching.